my name is Dawn. I'm the Ginger Cat Stitcher here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I want to thank all my subscribers and all my viewers. I'm just blown away with um, all of the, the views and the wonderful comments that I'm getting. So I want to say thank you so very much. So for today, I wanted to do a tutorial on how to make one of these uh, Stitcher's trays. Uh, I really like traveling with my stitching, uh, traveling as in upstairs I'm stitching or I move downstairs onto the couch or now that spring is here, uh, I can go stitch out on the back porch. So it's really handy to have a tray, something with um, an edge on it so that your spool of thread doesn't roll off and um, everything just kind of stays on there with magnets. So let me turn this around so you can see. So um, we have a pin cushion, uh, have a little thread bed here. We have a thread catch, an orc keeper, whatever you want to, to call them. Um, so that just sticks right there with the magnet, doesn't fall off. And then a little needle minder that sticks right there with the magnet. And the thread bed is attached with uh, Velcro. So if you'd like to make one of these for yourself, you wanna learn how, uh, please stay tuned and we'll do a tutorial on how you can make one of these for you. All right, let's get started. Okay, so to make our stitchers tray, we're going to, of course, need a tray. This is a tray that I found at our local thrift store, Goodwill. Um, it was five ten. I got it on half price day, so I paid two sixty dollars for it. Uh, unfinished new ones are available at Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. Um, I just happened to see this one in the thrift store and I liked the, the black. It'll go really well with my idea. So I went ahead and picked this up. It doesn't matter what it, the inside looks like because we're going to be covering that. Then another option for you if you can't find um, a tray is to use one of these signs. Um, these are available at my thrift store by the dozens. Um, they're just like from Hobby Lobby or places like that. Here, let me fix the sun. Um, again, 510, I got it half price. Oh, sorry. So 260 and you might have uh, some of these signs at your place that you no longer want, or you might see them um, clearanced or at the thrift store. And these will also make a good stitcher's tray. What you want to look for is something with a lip. So as long as it has this lip, it'll work. The lip just keeps your items from rolling off, like a spool of thread from rolling off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do up both of these to show you kind of the different look in each one. So that's the first supply that you'll need is your tray. Next thing that you're going to need is um, a selection of fabrics. So you can choose anywhere from four, one to four fabrics for your tray. So I have this really cute homespun cranberry and cream checked fabric. And then I chose this beautiful uh, fabric. It looks like it's cross-stitched. And then a floral. And then a floral with a bird. So these are going to be my fabric selections for this tray. You're also going to need like a piece of felt. This is just a piece of craft felt. Um, and it doesn't have to be the size of your tray. Mine mine is, so that makes it easier for me. But if you have just the cheap uh, craft felt, you'll probably need two pieces uh, to fit your tray. And that's perfectly fine to cut it and piece it. So you're going to need your felt, your selection of fabrics, anywhere from one to four fabrics. And for this one, I'll show you my fabric choices for this one. I have my piece of just felt here. If you don't have felt, another idea might be some batting, some thin batting, a couple layers of flannel, piece of wool, anything that's going to give um, a little bit of softness to the bottom. And then I chose pretty spring birds, some flowers and birds, some flowers. And then this one, oh, I love these panels. I got all of these on Etsy. 
So this will be my fabric choices for this one. The white on this is pretty scuffed up, so I'm going to go ahead and paint it. So if you need to paint your tray or your picture frame, that would be one of the, the first thing that you would do. So this one will get painted, but the black one is in great condition, and I'm just going to keep that one as is. So in addition to your tray and your fabric, you're also going to need some magnets, just these little round magnets. These are available at craft stores. And then you're going to need some washers. And if you can't find any washers, you can use just some little pieces of sheet metal or um, the Dollar Tree in the craft department has these little galvanized letters. $1.25 for the package. And they stick very well to a magnet. So these are just going to be on the back of the accessories that we create. So it really doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's something that is magnetic that will hold our items in place. So in addition to that, you're going to need some um, Velcro, the stick-on kind, the stick-on hook and loop fastener. And you're going to need a piece of fusible batting. And this piece, I've already cut to the dimensions that we need. So it measures just a little over six by just a little under five. So about a six by five piece of fusible fleece. I have two again because I'm doing two chair, two trays. Then you're gonna need some masking tape. Could also be painter's tape, green tape, blue tape, uh, just something like masking tape. And then a Pringles can. I got these at the dollar store. So $1.25 for the can and you can make uh, several of the thread catchers out of one can. So we'll need a can of Pringles. And then you're going to need some cardboard. And the like a cereal box is a perfect weight of cardboard. It would be wonderful if you had a like a jumbo family size box cereal box that would unfold to be the size of your tray, but um, I didn't. So I have a little bit of cat food box and cereal boxes to um, piece together for the insert into our tray. So just some sort of cardboard that's a nice thickness. You could also use poster board. So um, in addition to that, you'll just need some basic supplies like needle and thread, um, some just some white glue, uh, hot glue, E6000, and that should be it. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, step one is we're going to create the bottom for our tray. So uh, my cardboard wasn't big enough, so I have these two pieces here, and I'm going to use my tape, and I'm going to tape them together so that essentially becomes one long piece. Okay, my cardboard is taped together front and back. Now I'm going to put my tray on the cardboard and I'm going to trace around to get um, the size that I need. Let me raise you up here a little bit. Okay. And now we're going to cut it out. Here's our cardboard all cut out. Now we're going to test it in the tray. And it's gonna be a little bigger because we traced it from the bottom. So we're just gonna kind of bend it here 
and get an idea of where to cut it. So about. All right, I've trimmed it up some, and that looks like a great fit. All right, so this is going to be the base that we're going to insert into our tray. Okay, so now we're going to glue the felt onto the cardboard base that we have. I've got some Mod Podge here that I'm watering down a little bit so that it spreads easier. All right, so we've got that on there. And now we're going to put our felt just right over that. Let's do it this way. Get our tray back here. Okay, let's bring our fabric choices back out here so we can make our accessories. So like I said at the beginning, you can choose anywhere from one to four fabrics. Uh, one if you want your bottom of your tray and all the accessories to match or um, up to four if you want each one to be different. I chose this one for my pin cushion. So I went ahead and cut out the fabric and you're going to need a rectangle that measures approximately six by four. So it measures four by six and then I cut out from our cardboard a strip of cardboard that measures two by five and a half. And this is what we're gonna slide into our pin cushion onto the bottom. And we will attach some metal pieces there so that this will sit on the magnets in our stitchers tray and not move about. So what we need to do is go ahead and put this right sides together. And then we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and stitch around three sides, the two long sides and the short side. Before we take it over to the sewing machine and sew, we're going to prepare the base that we have uh, so that it will stick to the magnets and not move around. So I'm gonna use my washer and my little piece of corrugated tin. I'm going to use my E6000. And I'm just going to put a couple little bit of drops, smear that all around there. And I'm going to place them kind of towards the edges, towards the bottom and towards the top. I get the lid on this guy quickly or it just comes oozing out. All right. So now we got these on here. These are drying. We'll leave that right there and then we'll take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch the sides up. We have our completed little, well, our sewed together little pin cushion. So, and then we have our cardboard with our uh, metal pieces in it. Now, for some reason, my measurements were off and I did have to trim this down. So, um, just make sure that that'll fit into your pin cushion like so. So, I did have to trim that down. This. And get it on the right side of that stem. And just press that lightly right there just to hold that so that we can stuff it and it's not going to slide all over on us. So I like to stuff my pin cushions with a combination of um, fiber fill and uh, crushed walnuts. So I have alternated between fiber fill, then I pour in some walnuts, fiber fill walnuts, and I just keep alternating layers like that. 
until this will be my last layer of walnut shells. And then I finish it off by packing it nice and tight with the fiber fill. I'm just getting that pushed down in there. And then, all right, so I got it all stuffed and then I uh, used a needle and thread and closed it by hand. And then I just put a little bit of trim on it, a antique button, some lace and some velvet. So there we have it. So there's the pin cushion. Next is going to be the thread bed. So for that, I chose this fabric. So for the thread bed, you are going to let me open this up here. Use your fusible fleece and we are going to adhere it to our fabric on the wrong side of the fabric, leaving about an inch all around so that we can fold this over and then fold it over again to stitch down. So I'm just going to put this on here, grab my fabric scissors, and we'll do about an inch. About an inch all around. I'm going to go ahead and get out my mat and square this up and then iron it down and I'll be back after I iron it down. Oh, and I had a question before about what settings do I use on the iron to um, adhere this and I just follow the instructions on the package. Uh, so it's just, um, I use high heat and steam and I press, I don't iron, I just press it down so I don't distort it. So there we go. So you're going to cut out your fabric approximately an inch all the way around. We have the fleece fused to the fabric and then I went ahead and ironed each side over so that the edge meets the edge of the fleece and I pressed that down to give it a nice crease and then I squared off each corner. I didn't go all the way down to the fleece just a little bit um, past the edge of the fleece, but this will make it so that we have a nice mitered edge when we go to sew this together. And so that's the next step is we're going to fold these over and then we're going to top stitch all the way around to create a nice finished edge for our thread bed. So I'm going to head over to the machine again and top stitch this down. We are ready to move on to our next accessory. We have our pin cushion, we have our thread bed. Now we're gonna do the needle minder. So this is the fabric that I have chosen for that. And you're gonna need your cardboard again, and then just the spool of thread that you've been, that you use to uh, hand sew it together, and a marker, and we're gonna trace the thread spool but we're going to hold the marker up straight like this so you get about oh, I don't know maybe um, just shy of a quarter inch larger diameter of the spool so it's just a little bit bigger than the thread spool so you're going to do that two times cut those out and then you'll have two circles like this so now you're gonna need one of your magnets and your glue. And we're just gonna put some glue on there and get that centered, press it down, set that aside. Oh, get back in there. All right, so we're gonna set that aside for a little bit just to set up a little bit. We're gonna come back to our fabric and we're gonna use our circle 
gives me enough to bring over. So I'm going to look and see. I like that. Two templates. Now I'm going to add a little bit of glue. I'm just using the tacky glue. I'm just going to do a little bit around here. I'm going to put some batting on this and I just want the batting to be able to grab onto cardboard a little bit. I have just this tiny little scrap. And we're just going to stick that on there like that just to give it a little bit of body. All right, so now this is the fabric that I want for my top that has my flower centered. I'm going to pull off some of that actually a little bit too much. We don't really want it to be really puffy. We just want it to have a little bit of filling to it. That looks a little better. Maybe pull off a little bit more there. Now, it's just a matter of pulling these sides over. Glue gun. Give it a little bit of glue. And in this case, I'm going to use the letter J. I think I'll put it on this side. So I'm going to use the little metal letter, give it just a little bit of some E6000, stick that there in the middle. And then we're going to put the metal side down onto the fabric. And then again, we're going to use the hot glue gun. And we're going to fold this fabric over and there we have it. So here's the bottom part that has our little metal piece under there. Here's our top part with the magnet. And these are going to go together just like this. So at this point you can glue them together and press down the sides and glue them together or you can add some trim. And I have this little tiny pom-pom trim that I coffee dyed. And so I think that looks really cute on there. So I'm going to add that. So let's add some glue in here. Okay. This around covering up the, the place where we joined the two together. Right, so I glued, just hot glued this piece all around and there is our magnetic needle minder here's the back of it this is where our little metal piece is glued so to make the thread catcher this is the fabric that I chose for that so you're going to need to cut from this fabric a rectangle that measures eight by nine and three quarters. So 9.75 by eight. So this is eight. And then this is 9.75. And then we're going to fold a quarter inch over and then press that so that we'll have a nice finished edge. And then the first thing that we're going to do is to take it like this. And then we're going to sew using a quarter inch seam, going to sew from end to end here to create a tube. So I'm going to go do that real quick and I'll be right back. So now that we have the tube sewn for our thread catcher, we're going to set this aside and now we're going to make the support ring. So this is where you need your Pringles can and you're going to cut off the silver lip so that you just have um, 
a can without that. And then you're going to use a pen or a marker or something and mark half an inch. So you're just going to use a tape measure and just put a line as you go around for half an inch. And I realize the top of this can isn't cut super straight. Uh, that's okay when you're cutting off that lip, that silver lip. Um, just try to be as straight as you can, but it doesn't have to be perfect because this is going to be hidden inside the fabric. So I'm just marking half an inch all the way around. And then you're going to need a knife or X-Acto knife. And you're going to use that. And cut half an inch. So you're going to cut a ring half an inch around. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll be right back. All right, so I have my ring cut off. Very important that you don't just uh, cut through like this and then cut around. You have to keep the ring intact. What I found that worked best was I used my X-Acto knife to uh, get it started. And then once I got it started, then I just used uh, some utility scissors to go ahead and cut around. And that worked the best for me. So now that you have this ring cut off, we're going to cut two rings, two circles to fit inside it. So you need some more cardboard and you're going to put your ring down on the cardboard and this time you want to trace the inside of your ring, of your circle. All right, and then you're going to cut these out and these are going to be covered in fabric and these will be the bottoms of your thread catcher. All right, so I've cut out my two circles and to make sure that they're the right size, they should fit nice and easily down inside that ring that we cut off. And we're gonna make one, use one circle and we're gonna use, uh, I have this piece of felt left over from lining the bottom of my tray so we're gonna, I'm just gonna use that, but you can use a piece of quilt batting or if you have any felt left over, go ahead and use that. We're just gonna make one little circle to be just padding for the inside bottom cardboards. So I have some more of the fabric that I'm using for my thread catcher. And I took my Pringles can and I put it down I traced around it. So now I have a circle on there that is bigger than these inside circles. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out these two fabric circles and then I'll be right back. Okay, my two fabric circles are cut out. Now I'm going to adhere my, let's do it on this side. A little bit of glue on here. So I can put my felt on there. And then we'll do a little bit of glue on here. So I can put my piece of metal. I'll also do a dab of E6000 on that, make sure that stays. All right, so we have one circle that's covered with the felt. This is gonna be the inside bottom. We have another circle that has the metal piece on the bottom, and this will be our outside bottom. So we'll just leave that over there to dry a bit. I'm gonna take a needle with some thread, and we're gonna do a running stitch around the circle 
so that we can gather it and tuck our cardboard in there. All right, so I have this one on and I have the red felt side um, underneath so that as you can see, this gives a nice little slightly padded uh, bottom. And then since my glue is still drying, I just put some masking tape over it so that I won't get any glue on my fabric. And if I had this to do over again, I would have cut uh, leaving more fabric around my circle so that I have more uh, to bring over the edge. But now I'm just going to pull the strings Okay, so then you want to grab that, uh, pull it tight, and tie it off, and then that's the outside bottom. So these two pieces will go together just like this. And this has the magnet so that we'll be able to stick it to our stitcher's tray, no problem. Our fabric tube, and put it through our ring. We're going to open it up. The ring inside of it. Just pull that over like that. But then we're going to slide the fabric down so that um, the ends meet. So you just kind of have to wiggle it till you get this ring up there. And you want to match match up your seams and open them up and then put a clip so you want to snug your ring up against the bottom here but we want to clip these ends together So they don't slide on us. So now you're going to use some thread in a coordinating color and a needle and you're going to go and hand stitch right below that ring so that the ring is enclosed in a casing and it keeps that ring up there nice and tight. So you're going to stitch all along the bottom of the ring. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll be right back. And there we have it. I stitched all the way around. So now my ring is nice and secure up there. I just stitched all the way around there and now I'm going to use that same coordinating thread and I'm going to stitch my two circles together making sure to tuck in any thread tails or um, loose pieces of fabric and I'm going to go ahead and just do a whip stitch and stitch these two pieces together and all right I have my little sandwich stitched together so the padded side and the bottom now we're going to stitch this to the bag part so you're going to put the bottom in and then you're going to remove your clips And then you're going to stitch the bottom of the bag going through both layers, the inside layer and the outside, and stitch it all the way around. And there we go. I got it all whip stitched around. And here's our nice stand up little thread catcher. So now it's time to assemble all of the accessories onto our stitching tray. So I'm going to bring back the tray and we have our insert here with our felt on it and now you get to play around and see where you want to put your little accessories. I think I like the thread bed there. This still gives me room to put my scissors, a couple spools of thread, and the sides will keep them from uh, rolling off. So I think that looks pretty good. 
So the thread bed is going to be attached with our Velcro strips, so we don't need uh, to worry about the magnets for that. Our other ones, however, are all uh, magnet attached. So we have a magnet that we need to hold our thread keeper, I mean, oh, our needle keeper. And so that will go right there. And we're going to need a magnet that's going to hold our thread catcher. So put that about right there. And then we're going to need two magnets to hold, oh, I already have magnets on there, to hold our pin cushion. So if we want it right there, we're going to need a magnet about right there and about right there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and glue these down. I'm going to do a little dab of E6000 and then also, let's see, I'm going to mark that. Ah, a little dab of E6000 on there and then also a little squirt of hot glue to make it stick right away. Here we go with that one. Right. The reason we put them on to the felt is so that we can cover it over with our fabric. And then our items can just still stick right there without seeing our magnets. So we're going to take our insert out of here. We will flip it over and then we're going to use, make sure it's straight. And we're going to use our hot glue. I'm going to do the corners up first. Okay. And then I'm just going to go all the way around it and pull it nice and tight and hot glue it. And I'll be back once I have that done. Have it all glued down. Make sure that you have it the right way. So I got my two magnets there, one there and one there. And we'll bring in our tray. Now I'm gonna glue this down with Mod Podge. It's looking good, looking good. So let's move this out of the way. Get my Mod Podge here. Now that you have, I have the Mod Podge all spread out, I'll put our insert in. Making sure to push it down. And then you can place some books on here to let it set and get it to dry nice and, and flat. So I'm going to go ahead and go get some books and set this on there so it can dry nice and flat. And then we will resume once this dries. And now that our uh, 
Our insert is now dry, so I went ahead and placed each one of the accessories on top of the corresponding magnet. And so now we're going to do the thread bed. So I'm going to take my uh, hook and loop fastener and I'm going to put them two together. And I think one on each end is plenty. And I'm going to place them so that if I take the thread bed off of the tray, that the soft part is left on the tray. I don't want it to... Uh, you know, kind of collect a whole bunch of threads or whatever. So I'll make sure I kind of have those where I want them. And then I'll take my thread bed, I think about right there. I'll give it a push. And I'm thinking I might want to add little bit of hot glue underneath of this. I don't want it to peel off every time I take off my thread bed. I think that's just the cutest name, little thread bed. Where my thread sleep. All right, so I'll get that on there. And then let's go ahead and do a dab. Oh, those are sticking pretty well onto that. I still just do a little dab under there. Oh yeah, they're sticking, that's sticking real well there. I don't want to peel that one off. And then I'll stick my thread bed on there. And there we have it. Everything is stuck on there. I can go ahead and travel around the house with it. If I have a spool of thread on there, it's not going to roll off and fall on the floor. <laughs> So this is how our primitive style one came out and I want to show you and bring in the other one and this is how the other one came out. If you'll remember this was uh, white and then it had just a paper uh, sign behind it uh, that just um, attached this over top of it. All right, that was it. That was um, the tutorial. I hope you find that this project is pretty quick and easy, and I hope that it's something that you would make. Um, let me know in the comments below which style you like best. Do you like the, the spring with the birds? This uh, pincushion here, I thought this was just so adorable. Little bluebirds in the bird bath. I got all these fabrics off of Etsy. So do you like this style better? Or do you prefer, the, whoa, do you prefer the primitive style better? So leave me a comment down below and let me know which style you like best. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, I hope something good happens to you this week. And happy stitching. See you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.